Yeah, I suppose that's how it starts. Anyway. <laughs> that's how they dismantle us. God, I really couldn't handle that. Also, Chrome started crashing. What the heck is that? Like another Google, another Google project product. Yeah, that's really creepy too. Like they reuse components. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, let's get back to it. Um, so the milestones, right? So I put the milestones in, and um, we can sort of review them. What they desperately need from from owners is issues fleshed out in them. Um, so for folks like uh, Giovanni, this will be easy because he's uh, he's had uh, he's been tracking a lot of this stuff in in Scrimdu, and so he can try to, to put that in there. I wanted to say something though about the milestones. Um, so and and the way to kind of organize this, and again, this is an experiment for this time, but. Um, so the pattern, I think, is that there's a, there's a master uh, hub project where the milestones go, and uh, but we don't, but we don't remove the issues from the individual 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 projects um, uh, repositories. repositories. Wow, somebody's obviously still having trouble getting in. So. Yeah, I see Mike in and out, Joe in and out. Yeah, all right. Well, anyway, so taking the notes, hopefully uh, let's come back in. Uh, okay. If I'm not shut out of the matrix, um, uh, they can read the notes. Okay, so we don't remove the issues from the... Still having trouble there, Mike? Well, there's two of me, so no, my... <laughs> My my Chrome is now going bananas, but we'll see. I'll do quick. We can only hope, Mike. We can only hope that we could clone you. That would, uh, that would just be very Yeah, helpful. two muscle cells instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are on two. You are on two. Uh, two milestones, as uh, as is uh, Tim and myself. I don't know, Mateo, if I signed you to two. So anyway, so it'd be useful to to clone our, ourselves so that we can we can work on all this. Um, okay, so um, so the idea is that there's a master hub project where the milestones go. We don't remove the issues from the individual repositories. Not a good day for the internet. Guys, I think it's time to agree that this isn't going to work today. Is it just Stephen that's frozen? Yeah. <laughs> Chrome crashed again. Uh, this is not a coincidence. This is definitely no, not a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. Chrome, Chrome Time for well, I, I think it might be process. that uh, you know the way Chrome has your account uh, linked to mm. it, and probably Chrome is trying to do something with their servers. Servers are not responding, uh, and uh, that's incredible that they can cause a crash. Yeah, that's but not they, good. The fact I think Stephen did something that cr crushed the internet. Yeah, I, I think the that accusation that I brought Google down is, uh, you know, a, a, sort of over, over, overvalues my my influence. Too many tabs, <laughs> man. You fucked up Google by opening too many tabs. I, I did have a lot of tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how it starts. <laughs> I don't think it's too far fetched. <laughs> Probably the most tabs I have ever had open at a single time. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm trying to say before before Chrome crashes again. And, and then I'll have to come in through Firefox because it's ridiculous. Um, so uh, it's a, there's a question about where the issues should go, and um, we, you know, I, I think we shouldn't we shouldn't close down all the issues in all the individual repositories because it's very useful to have bugs there 
and it's very uh, you know useful to define additional functionality. At the same time, uh, we want to have a single place where all the items for the next release go, and so those are going up in the Master Hub project. And so there's a little bit of a question of like, what does it mean if there's an issue that's at the Master Hub? And I think basically like we should, there, there may end up being some duplication, I think, between what's in the master hub and what's in the individual repos. I think we should try to embrace that and see if that's, if we, if that's okay. Because I think there's both sort of the top down way to look at the, at the project to say like, so the single viewpoint, what do we want to get done? And then there's kind of the bottom up, which is like for each individual code repo, like what, what are the, the things, what are the things that that particular bit of code, uh, what is, what is the path that that code is taking? So um, for now, I think, um, and, and also the milestones may not directly map to a single code project. Like a single milestone may actually involve integrating multiple projects together. So it's not really appropriate to have all the issues like goals that we want to get done down at the individual level. So let's try it. Uh, it's an experiment. Uh, it seems like uh, you know every release we try a new thing, um, and I apologize for that. But I'm hoping that this is going to consolidate things. There's a lot of advantages to having everything consolidated on GitHub, as you guys are probably already starting to be aware of, especially in terms of notifications, where everybody can see what was happening across the whole project, which I really like. Uh, single sign-in, no additional uh, service to worry about. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, so my basic message for this, if we can now start to get get, get into that, um, you know, in the last uh, you know the last hour here, is that if you are marked as the owner for one of these milestones, first of all. Check to see if it makes any sense, uh, if my description makes any sense, if you agree with the value of what I've written, if you agree that that's the direction it should go. Any language that you want to change, change it. Uh, if you think that it's dumb, change it, uh, punt it. Uh, if there's something missing, please add it. Um, this is literally just me like priming the pump for you guys to then take over and, and run with this. Um, so um, please do that um, if, you're, uh, if you're a lead before the next sprint. Uh, hopefully sooner than that, and uh, and then we can uh, we can get going. Okay, so with that uh, I guess we can go into just updates because we didn't really get updates out last time in terms of what folks are doing individually and um, and uh, what directions folks want to move in, as well as any any conversation about you know what the milestones should be and, and shaping them. Um, so we can go around with uh, the folks that are here. Uh, Mike, I'll start with you. So, I think my, the two t things I did since the last meeting was the muscle cell. I've continued to make a lot of progress on that. <clears throat> um, I've added added all tunable parameters and also made the simulation itself closer to the exact experimental condition experimental conditions um, of the data. So. Yeah, expect a refined mo refined model to be coming up. Um, I'm expecting some new powerful hardware in the coming days, so hopefully I'll be able to refine the model hugely. Um, so that's on the modeling. Um, other than that, oh yes, a cool thing is the uh, I've, I've begun to publish the documentation on my optimization tool. I'll just po post the link to, to that on the chat. So this is obviously not fully complete, but it's a, it's a start. So yeah, so there's that link. That's the optimization tool. Oh, is there a link? Should, there, should I be seeing uh, a link? On, on, the, on the chat, I've posted a link to the optimization tool. Can you see it? No, this thing is really messed up. No, I don't, I don't see anything. <laughs> OK, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll, I'll put it. Put it in the doc. I'll put it, I'll put it in the doc, OK? So that's it's just the optimal. If you just Google optimal neuron, read the docs. It's there. Um, it's quite incomplete, but but it's just, it's the it's the beginning. Um, also, what I've done is I've spent a considerable amount of time reading and editing and commenting on Balash's essay. Yes. And uh, do you have any? Do you want to bring up any topics related to that uh, right now? Just um. um I think it it does need quite a lot of quite a lot of work is my input. Okay. What sort of work what sort of what can folks here do to help? So 
it does need an addition of tech, t addition of uh, so there's there's major conceptual things and sort of major style stylistic things. Um, there's you know grammatical things and the w ways of, of of expressing things. That those those are quite uh, straightforward. They just require some some work. Uh, the main thing that struck me was probably we need to really have a nice long discussion about our exact technical definition of the Turing test, of the behavioral Turing test. That needs to happen because my impression from reading the essay was that it's not sufficiently strictly defined yet. So maybe we've been skirting around that issue. I think there was a feedback about that and I don't know that he worked it into the paper yet but uh, one of the it's, suggestions was exactly that, to define it, and there were there were some proposals in the document with the with feedback. Okay, because one of my main inputs, which might <laughs> might not go down very well, is that um, the what Balash is calling the null Turing test. I can't remember. I think it's the the null not Turing test in the null environment or something. The mm -hmm. way he defined it did not actually strike me as a full Turing test in the sense that he described running a simulation and asking a biologist, do you think this looks like a real worm compared to real, elegant, real C. elegans? Could you, could you differentiate between the simulation and the real C. elegans and so on? Which is fine, except that the Turing test technically does involve some kind of interaction between the observer and, the, and what's being observed. Anyway, it's a very, it's a very philosophical yeah, technical that's discussion. True. It doesn't. It's a quite, so it's quite a technical discussion, but it's a technical discussion we need to have. And other than that, there's uh, just this whole the structure of the, the structure of the document and stuff. But but I mean, it's it's a gr it's a great starting point, no doubt about it. Yeah, the, I I, re I remember some time ago, Mike, I was kind of making the same uh, comment on the Turing test. I was suggesting interaction, but the answer I got at that time, if I remember, was like. Yes, but it's too complicated to have interaction for now. It's going to be just this From first the start. Yeah. But, but I mean, uh, now thinking about it again, uh, I, I was talking to a Sierra's biologist in UCL last week, and uh, I'm pretty sure that if you ask a biologist, no biologist would tell you, yes, that looks like a C. elegans, hence uh, I am convinced that it is a C. elegans. Like a biologist would like to say, okay, what happens if we uh, do this, uh, what can we observe? Like uh, what if we suppress, I don't know, GABA, what, how does it behave? In that case, I can tell you if it does the same thing that I am usually observing because it's not that we're just watching a movie. Or even something... This, um, in this area, I share what you're okay. saying, as in there has to be some kind of interaction, I think. I've put, okay, well, I've put a huge amount of comments in, in into the paper, so if you could add to that, I don't know if you can comment on a comment, that, but I think you can have a conversation on a comment. Yeah, you can have a conversation, which is... So, yeah. I but think I if everyone agrees uh, that, the, that the ideal way is that there should be some interaction, I think uh, the idea initially was you put it in a null environment initially, and uh, yeah, 
I mean, you could bring up the fact that in the Turing test, I mean, if there's no communication, as you're saying, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the parallel with the worm, it's uh, stimuli. So you're basically doing some kind of uh, very... It, 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 it's not meaningless in a sense, because you're still uh, giving it to a biologist to say, does it do what the real worm does in that environment? So mm -hmm. the only interaction is that you put it in that environment. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's valueless. I'm saying that... In my opinion, it's not it would enough. Be it would be incorrect. No, to no, no. It's just test. yeah. It's just a step. It's just the first step towards something bigger, and that something bigger is not specified so in that paper should, yet. So we should probably specify the whole Turing test, uh, mm -hmm. and then what different steps, and obviously we would be working towards yeah. implementing yeah. and making sure that we uh, pass those steps one at one. Broad strokes of the big picture, and then maybe even a more detailed explanation of the initial step, just because it's the one that is going to be done first. Uh, yeah. I think that's reasonable. Um, so yeah, had, some, go ahead, Mike. So, so, sorry. Um, one more thing which just strikes me is there, there, there does need to be more technical content in there. Yeah. Yep. So even so, even with the um, the comments, so Balash had said that he had made some some updates in some private copy, but he said that to go ahead and put the LaTeX version up uh, as it was, and that he would re-add those in. So there may be some additional pieces that are missing, but um, I will go through it this week. Um, last week was just sort of a blur. Many many other things I haven't done as much uh, as I'd like. So this week I'll go through and I'll add in what I think. Um, to be there, but I really appreciate you taking the lead on that, Mike, and I think the rest of us need to step up to Mike's example, me included. Yeah, and the, the one thing I was just wondering, because uh, um, uh, basically Mike just added comments, lots of comments, but comments on the text. Yeah. Is that how we want to do it, as in just adding comments, because the other option could be that we do some edits to the document. Oh, I've done a lot of edits. OK. Because okay. you can always go do revision history. Um, so there's edits and there's edits. When I found like uh, grammatical improvements, I just went ahead and made an edit because oh, okay. Okay. When, when, they're, when they're obvious. Um, when I found uh, something which like I, I clarified or just slightly changed the meaning of, because I, um, I edited and left a comment. OK. Cool. No, that's good. Is that your diagram, Mike? That's just of Wikipedia. I, I put it there as a placeholder for uh, our own diagram. OK, got it, got it. That's cool. All right. But that illustrates the communication. That's why one of the main reasons I put it there. Yeah. yeah. Why, why, do you think, why do you think footnotes should be avoided? He actually used a lot of footnotes. Because if we're going to publish a paper, footnotes are not usually found in publications. Maybe I don't know. Do you disagree? Uh, you know, I, it's a good point. I haven't, I haven't seen one in, um, I haven't seen one in, in biology and computational biology much. However, in things that are more like philosophical essays, um, I see them more often. So, yeah, it's. Interesting point. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't typically. I, I don't. No. I just most footnotes should be avoided just out of convention. That I've not. I've not encountered them, and yeah. I just believe in sticking to conventions. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. I think it's it's a debate about the anyway. This is like the most minor thing ever. Sorry. Okay. Um. That that sounds fun. Um. Okay. Well, awesome. Um. Let's keep going around the table and see if we can get as well to like looking forward at what our next steps are um, in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, the holidays are going to come up, so probably not going to be a lot that we do before January, but good, good to focus. So, Matteo, what's up? What's new? Um, so, what's new? Uh, the, um, I'm, I'm still working on the, on the visualizer. I, uh, 
I don't think I have it running up now. But uh, what I'm adding is the support to basically have when you select a cell that you can also basically reference directly and open in the context of the visualizer uh, external resources like uh, Warm uh, Atlas uh, or Warm Base in the context of the neural. So basically, uh, to try and make a place where you can gather all the kind of knowledge which is out there without necessarily that knowledge being structured inside the neural file. So, but I'm just putting in place this sort of um, capability for this to be there, and then we'd like to go and work on the model to actually add these links to each one of the to each one of the cells which i'm not doing yet so i'm just adding the support so that if there's a link you can open that link from the visualizer and then you can bring it up which is going to be useful um, and, and that's it and i'm working on deployment so that uh, uh, hopefully within january we will be able to work and play with it and uh, the other thing, I started some work on the OpenWorm website. Uh, and uh, I might have the, yeah, I, I could bring that up. Uh, but basically, I'm, I'm using uh, Bootstrap, you know, the Twitter uh, Bootstrap library, which does a really neat job at providing uh, sort of front-end uh, visualization uh, for a common website like the one that we need to, we don't need to reinvent the wheel in that case. And uh, so I just want to quickly show you, uh, and this is after uh, I think just one hour of playing with it or so, so it's nothing uh, near to completion. But it, I would like to hear some feedback from you guys if you think it would be a good way to do it. And I you really want to crush this thing, Stephen. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I want to see. I, I can never uh, use these things. When when camera, I'm, man. <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> you don't have that? I guess I only have that when I'm the one hosting or something. Sorry, Matteo, for interrupting you. Just no, 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 it's fine. I'm Steven bringing, I'm... added some exotic plugin. <laughs> Why does it that? Apparently, I can like pick who's on the screen at a, at a time or something like that, but I don't really want to. I was just thinking about it. Okay. Uh, so, this is... This show are you as a tester or something. Maybe. Okay, let's <coughs> should we should we move on, Mateo, or are you gonna have it? Uh, well, I something really unexpected happened, on her. and. Uh, Yes, let's say so, but uh, let me, uh, I'll, I'll just move on saying another thing about the milestone work that you did, and then whenever the one will yeah. be we'll bring the website up. So uh, I think it's great. I, I really liked uh, having everything there, uh, especially since uh, I, I suppose I'm personally use it, using it more and more, the, the GitHub issue bar milestone management, and I think it's really powerful, and it's a really good way to keep track of what we're doing. Regarding the split uh, uh, general project, uh, uh, umbrella project you created, and individual repository, I was just uh, thinking as you were talking, and tell me if you think it's a good idea or not, that maybe the split could be, we have the milestones as you created them in the umbrella project, and then the issues that we create uh, for these milestones in the umbrella project are like the stories, okay? Yeah. Then uh, we create, let's say that, I, I just make an example for the simulation engine, okay? There is the milestone for the simulation engine, and let's say that I create a story in there which says we need to be able, um, the, the story to be able to visualize SPH, okay? Now, this would be an issue in the umbrella project, uh, within the simulation engine milestone. I could then go to the 
all the bundles that contain the code, okay, that require uh, some editing in order to reach that story, and I could create there a milestone which represents that story. And the issues within the individual repository would be the tasks. So that basically we have in the umbrella project uh, epic and stories, where epics are milestones and issues are the stories. And in the local projects, we could have stories as milestones and issues as tasks. And I don't know if this would make sense, uh, uh, but it would be a way, anyway. <laughs> Proposed. reasonable. I think you should try it for your for the ones that you've got your, your dang lead on, and let's let's enable some some experimentation to happen. Um, so I, I'll I'll try to follow that pattern myself. Um, and, and, and let's see how it works, uh, because in, in that case we could cover the entire like general view. You look at it, and we could assign in the umbrella project the stories to the person that is responsible for them. But then uh, the tasks within the individual repository would be assigned to whoever is going to actually do the work and implement it. I suspect that because you you know you're, you're coding on a, a large number of the projects and uh, the, the large number of the repos, that what you do will probably be pretty influential in terms of impact on how the rest of us do it. So I would say, yeah, just take the lead and, and I think we'll follow suit. Maybe you can write up a guide of what you just said and post it to the list uh, just so uh, somebody else wanting to follow the same practice that you're... Okay, I, I'll create an example, uh, a practical example, and uh, then we can review it and I'll send it to the list, okay. Yeah. That's good. And I will try to bring the website as Giovanni speaks. I don't know what's happening. Joe? Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to, to say other than I'm working on the porting the latest SPH version from C++ to Java. Yep. I started doing that uh, a week ago. Basically, still doing. Uh, I will be happy if I do it uh, by the end of the year, if I get it done. Okay. And I will try to do that. It's not the easiest, as you can imagine. That would be really impressive. Uh, oh, Matteo put out the website. Yeah, as always, as it's not my turn anymore. It takes two seconds. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I don't want to interrupt you. No, yeah, so basically, I'm basically working on that and not, I mean, Usual other small stuff, but that is the only real tasks. I closed all the other ones. I left this one for last, just because it was the biggest. And uh, Sergey was very graceful, as in he produced a list of a, 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 some kind of a trace of changes from the snapshot we ported previously to to the one we want to port now. So that uh, that's gonna be. I mean, that's that's useful. I'm I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as I go, and it's just it's just not straightforward. You need to be very careful, and there's no way to test it other than run it at the end. <laughs> so like all the tests that we had in there are kind of superseded because the guys uh, kind of uh, stopped uh, keeping them up to date. Which is, I mean, after we finish this, we'll try to reinstate them. But uh, for the time being, it's just a matter of like line by line comparison, and it's it's difficult. But it needs to be done. So that's all I'm doing. Well, that's that's enough just to work on uh, alone. So it's one of those tasks from hell. Yeah. <laughs> Typical, uh, like. Stuff that's enough to keep you busy for a while, and hopefully you you and you like come out of the tunnel sometime in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fair. Tim, I think uh, so. We ex you exchanged a mail. I think you're you've been uh, perfecting your Python skills, right? Yeah, I'm finishing up my last week of a Python class, so that's pretty much been absorbing my time the last uh, few weeks. But uh, yeah, so really, there's not much to report other than, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I know much more about Python now than I knew eight weeks ago. Awesome. Welcome to the party. I'm, I'm, I'm also slowly educating myself. I'm not a 
not naturally a core uh, Python programmer, but uh, but that's good stuff. And um, so maybe I should share the code with you that I that I used to scrape Worm Atlas. Would you be interested to see that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I should probably put it up on GitHub. Uh, I just have to like remove my personal password from it. But yeah, I'll make a note to do that. And uh, maybe interesting to you to to check it out. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Cool. Good. So, Mateo, you want to walk us through this? Is it you just have the first well, page? I, I, again, it's just the this is the output of an hour of work. So, and I was mainly trying to get the menus in terms of uh, the new split that we were discussing, which obviously needs more discussion. But basically, the idea is to have a home, and this is the home and. Mm, I don't know if you have in, uh, present the carousel sort of thing. Uh, I would like to put that here on the home, so with an arrow on the right and on the left uh, of this mm, green square that you can basically go uh, back and forward to the different areas of the project. But it, it would be just an image, uh, an inspiring, uh, sexy image of a given area. So it could be connectome, it could be SPH, uh, muscle cell and and then you would go and learn more about that specific area just as a showcase embedded in the home page and and then yeah, obviously all the text is just a placeholder I copied and pasted that is from our previous website uh, but we should really think in terms of uh, um, there are different kind of, uh, we knew this requirement uh, when we created the first website, uh, but I think we know much more right now so that we should, uh, so th that we should really structure the website to address the issue of uh, having different, completely different users coming to open world. And ideally we want to reach all of them with their uh, basically targeting explicitly what are their needs. So if they are biologists, they need to know what kind of biology we have, what kind of biology data we need, for instance, so that they can feel that they can help us if they want to, because this is not clear at the moment. If you are a biologist, you go in the website, you understand that we're trying to do something with a worm, how can I help? Not really clear. Okay, and people are not going to send emails to us because we're talking about people that have a job and that are obviously busy with their experiments. So if they have a framework where they can contribute easily, then they would do it, they could do it. If they don't find that, then they just leave. So, and we need to address biologists, we need to address software developers, we need to address computational people. And we need to address even enthusiastic that might just want to write a blog post about this or that might contribute in kind of helping us spreading uh, the spreading rumors about the project. So we need really to different areas uh, to address all of this and um, to uh, this is in no way addressing that problem yet. Yeah, it, but it's just a concern that I have and something that we need to have a discussion on and see how we can address it. I was um, putting here on the on the footer some links that we had that, that are probably because if we expose too much or in the same place then it will just get confusing and this is um, really uh, kind of standard now to put the contact uh, people events like minor information that you might still want to read about but they are not the main thing. I move them here down to the footer and uh, Basically, we need to create the, the we need to create the content for the website uh, and tell me what you think about the current structure. Uh, but I, I, I want to try to avoid the mistakes we've done in the first website to try to address all the things that we learned. And for instance, one of the problems that we had is that uh, probably Joe was struggling a lot trying to get the content, uh, as in uh, trying to get people <laughs> in, involved in writing uh, content for the website. And 
we didn't support him well enough, I think. So if we, and let's remember that our main target for these and the main reason why we're doing this is that if all going well with the wired um, article that it will be in uh, March in uh, UK, then we'll have a big chance of having a good spike, a good media coverage of the website and we don't want to waste it. So we need to address uh, all, like it has to be very transparent, very precise, uh, and uh, basically have all the people coming from all the different angles will need to find their way into what the project is trying to achieve. We need to be clear, we need to avoid any ambiguities. Uh, for instance, uh, even the sentence that we put there to begin with uh, help us build the first artificial life form. I think that is a bit misleading and uh, uh, we, we just need, but we need to put this effort because it's just two months, okay? It will be holiday time in 10 days and then it's January and then we'll have just two months. We need to create a, a group that focuses just on this. I can drive the implementation part of it. I'm sure Joe would be happy to help me there, but otherwise for all the content we need to do it all together. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that was the challenge last time because Matteo. I mean, yeah, sorry. There you go. No, no, please continue doing. No, I was just reinforcing what he said that I struggled to get content. How easy is this? Is it for us to? Uh, will it be for us to add content? Will there be like a CM? Is there like a CMS? Um, well, to add content is um, as it, well, knowing a bit of HTML is very easy. So the, um, it, there's no CMS, as in, it's no Tumblr that um, without any skills you can just go there and write the content. But what we can do is to have the um, Google Doc where we just gather all the text. Uh, and that reflects the structure of the website and then we can do the work of actually bringing the content inside of it or anybody who is willing to <laughs> contribute directly to the code is more than welcome to do it. The website is on GitHub, the current version is branched so I will, um, I will show you for instance at the moment what, uh, where, where this content is coming from again. With some, if you uh, know like where to put text, it's uh, fairly easy even to do it without getting the code down. You can just edit it from the web uh, editor. In GitHub, if, it, if it's just text, and then I someone mean, else will format it for you. But in terms of adding the content itself, uh, it can be done very easily, and then someone has to deploy it. Yeah, I mean, I know enough HTML that if I see something I like some text, I want to change a sentence. That's I can, yeah. I can do that. Yeah, so I am showing you, and I put the link on the chat. But like, there's the so this is the index, uh, and this is like there's a paragraph. Use this document as a quick uh, way to start a new project. Help us build. Uh, I mean, it, it's fairly. If you search for text, you'll find the section you're looking you, for. You'll find the section. So this is the footer. I mean, it's no. But once I side. once I change something in this branch, then what happens? Uh, nothing. Well, nothing. As in, uh, it happens that uh, when I pull. Uh, ah, I see. I I, I, I the change. So it, it's like as if we are writing code, really. Uh, okay. not, nothing changes in, nothing goes live. The, this branched version is not live anywhere. I but understand. Once we are, but once we are happy with what's in the branch, we can just deploy it. So uh, I can uh, um, I can deploy even the branch version and I can do that regularly to, uh, for people to look at what the content is. At the moment I didn't do it yet because the, I, I, I just started, but otherwise it can work that way. Okay, so who should be the lead on this? I put, I actually, when I was writing up the website milestone, which I linked in the chat there, I put Giovanni on it. Mateo. Both of you. 
Oh. Well, uh, for now, he's been taking the lead. Uh, but I have no problem call lead. Okay. And, uh, uh, and no the team that we only put up as, as issues then. Um, huh? So the, the things that we're going to want to do, like the discussions that we're having right now about what changes we want to make. Uh, yeah, should be issues on the website for monitoring. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, yeah, content or whatever, uh, we can link the Google Doc there from the README of the website for where to put the content. And obviously, we need to uh, start a separate conversation and organize probably uh, uh, first thing in January a meeting with the people that are going to produce the content. Uh, see, one of the problem I think last time was that. Uh, no one in particular was supposed to write any content, as in everybody does it and nobody did it. So uh, mm. it, it's it's I ended better. Up doing it. It's better. It's better maybe to say, okay, who wants to help contributing? We get some names, <laughs> and then we meet only with the names and we do the. I think stuff. we need to be aware of the fact that. Uh, it's not some bullshit that some boring bullshit that we need to do. It's it's actually important. Um, last time it was a bit of a drag for everyone, as in for me that I was trying to nag people to do stuff to like write your own section, write your own section. Uh, I ended up drafting most of them, and then they were reworked into what we have now. But uh, we need to actually like understand that this is important because this is what people are exposed to okay, when they uh, um, first uh, visit um, the thing. On the other hand, I also want to uh, kind of uh, uh, say something nice about uh, the current website we have, as in let's not forget that before that website we didn't even have a website and the project, uh, like we were trying to grow the project and the fact that uh, just after not even a year we're in the position where we need a much better website because the project uh, is, is bigger and is becoming more and more important. I think it's just something good that happened to us. So the previous website was as good as it could have been back then. Now yeah. we're in a position where we can improve it again and we need to improve it, and that's just good. All right. Seeing that Alex and uh, and Andre tried to join and couldn't, and trying to hang out. So I think we had a lot of technical issues today. And let's see if we can get. And then see. So Stephen, uh, for the um, for the milestones, uh, will you follow up with an email um, to each one? Yes. Of yeah. the people saying, are you happy to be responsible? And if you are, please by next spring to do create the stories and assign them to yourselves, and then uh, uh, find out, identify whoever needs to collaborate with you on the individual task, and then get them to create the task to create the story. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I will do that. Sounds good. Cool. And. Um, Yes, and another question I wanted to ask uh, yourself and team, uh, and Stephen, was about uh, data uh, bringing. Uh, I, I know you were doing uh, some work uh, to uh, basically present all the data we have at the moment, uh, what data we do not have, and uh, basically to create a placeholder even to provide this data. Because, for instance, I was talking uh, uh, with. Um, a biologist uh, uh, last week, as I was saying, in, in UCL, Arancha Barrios, and she was saying that she could help us uh, basically figure out, figuring out where to find some data, uh, to basically contribute herself with some data that she has, for instance, on receptors for different neuropeptides, uh, and uh, but we don't have an obvious place where to do that. Okay, and again. It's not that these people don't have anything to do so that they can 
put a lot of effort in trying to figure out what is that we need. It has to be our own effort to make it very obvious what is that we need and how this information will be contributed. So, yeah, that's, that, that's where we're looking at um, doing some data visualization in that we can represent the data that we have and be able to show the data that we're missing. So I, I'm working on that right now and, and uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have something that uh, we can start start playing with. Do you have anything to add there, Steve? Uh, no. Nope. We also have a look to some of this stuff and uh, we'll, see if, uh, we'll see what update we get there. Um, so I think it's, you know, for us, basically the home of the data is in, um, is in Google Drive, in Google Drive um, is where, you know, we're, we're consolidating stuff. And I, uh, as of last meeting, I tried to move things that are related to data as much as possible out of Dropbox into Drive um, and, uh, and, and work from there. So, but, what? but it's a series of, what? Why, why do we choose Drive over Dropbox exactly? So, it's not. It's not that I'm shutting Dropbox down. Well, one is 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 you know the concern of consolidation for one thing, but um, the challenge is just when there's the same type of thing in both places, it gets confusing and nowhere to go. So the division, the distinction I've tried to make is that if it's if it's some sort of a document that that Drive supports, like a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or more like PNGs type stuff and, and that kind of stuff, then I'll try to move it to Drive. But if it's anything else. Um, zip files of you know of things and um, more freeform type stuff like code tarballs and that kind of stuff. I'll leave that on Dropbox. Um, so in this case, a lot of the data that we're constructing are you know, spreadsheets, uh, mainly spreadsheets. Um, I think is the main source of that stuff. So then more and more, I'm trying to consolidate it into Drive into the same place, and then ultimately I think you know reduce the number of spreadsheets that we have um, as well, so that it's a single. Single story. Right. Okay. No, but, but, but the problem is well noted, and we agree. And that's why we're looking at ways to present the data so that um, you know we, we don't have this uh, issue of. Because even with the spreadsheets, it can get confusing as to what it really means, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and another thing that then would be, would be good would be I know there, there was probably already some script to go from uh, the spreadsheet. To a neuroconstruct project that then was used to create the connecton. I was thinking if maybe now that we're uh, reconsolidating the the different spreadsheet and trying to minimize them, it would be good maybe to revisit the script to bring everything to a neuroml two file. Yeah, well, well, Stephen and I had had that discussion, and I and I don't want to speak for you, Stephen, but um, my take on it was that. We wanted to simplify it, and what we're concerned about with XML in general is that it, you have to have some way to, you know, look at it or read it. It's, it's sometimes not all that obvious looking at the raw XML itself. So uh, Stephen kind of was pushing us or me into just doing it in a, in a more simplified form as far as the spreadsheet like the car model did, and then and then we can extrapolate from that to whatever forms we want to go to. Well, I, 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 think, I, I think I agree in the sense that the spreadsheet would be something very easy for everyone to look at. Stephen, are you still there? I see your mouth half open. I'm, uh, yeah. I was freezing in a funny pose. <laughs> you, were, you were freezing <laughs> in a <laughs> Uh, so I, I think the spreadsheet would be the, a good source of the data as long as we have scripts that then can convert the spreadsheet into the more structured, uh, uh, for instance, NeuroML2 that we can then use uh, as the kind of to start building the computational model which we can use uh, both in the simulation engine to can visualize. Uh, so. Uh, it's like the spreadsheet would be also much more uh, easy to work with uh, per se as, as someone that comes from the outside and has some information that as a, to be able to contribute the data just in a, in a spreadsheet form is probably the most user-friendly for these people 
presenting them with an XML, and then we'd have to build a, an editor just for that. Because yeah, that, and I agree. I mean, this is a good discussion, and I and I agree with you, and that and that's where Stephen and I concluded that let's, let's simplify it as much as possible, and then extrapolate from that into the forms that we need to do the simulation and, and do the things we want to do. Right. So to be clear, um, right. So we. Um, this is this is basically the strategy that we've executed already. I'm I'm looking through. Um, this org wrote was a script that reads well, the spreadsheet that Tim generated with all the data, and uh, it builds the neural construct project uh, automatically from that data, and then it exports, and then you can export as a second step with, a, with another script to NeuroML. So that exists right now. So the presence of those scripts means that the authoritative version of the data remain in the spreadsheet uh, that then is easy to edit and then we just like like a build process we just compile it into into NeuroML. So it's a matter of just you know maintaining that script so that it pulls even more and more data out. Um, but that's there today. So those scripts exist right now. And I also link to the to the uh, the web folder where all the data are and it's still it's, you know, we're, we're still trying to, to consolidate it even more. But uh, that's at least you know, what I like about it is it's a link that I can just send and t to anybody, and you can start to have a look at what some of those things are uh, that we've got in there. Everything in bylaw is a, a warehouse of data. Yeah, and uh, say for the worm base and worm atlas links for each one of the cells would be nice to have those in the spreadsheet so that then they can get exported to, well, at the moment, to NeuroConstruct, and then they would end up eventually on a NeuroML file so that yeah. I could read them uh, and basically whenever we'll be re uh, releasing the, the visualizer, then people would be, it, I think that tool would be very useful then. All the people that are looking at it are quite impressed. Yeah, actually, it's pretty trivial now. I, I have a script that I could I could uh, I didn't think to add the actual URLs in this spreadsheet, but I could. Um, so maybe Tim, when I share this uh, when I share this Python with you, maybe talk about like maybe as a project you can try it because it um, yeah it would be an interesting application of, of what we're doing. Like the information's there, just requires a few modifications. Uh, to insert URLs of the cells on the spreadsheet. Right. And and um uh, and for war uh, you were you, you did this for worm atlas or worm base Stephen worm atlas worm atlas yeah and uh, fair in a very similar way probably can be done for worm yeah okay so Mike I'm curious what your you know you you uh, have dug into many different pieces of the uh, of the project in the last uh, month or two and I'm curious what you're going to have. Where you're going next? You know, the next thing that you want to get to, and how? how um, I didn't catch the end of your question, but I think I can. How can I help? Or how can you help? Um, so my focus right now is on releasing, doing a proper release of my optimization tool and writing a paper on that. That's what I'm really focused on right now. Um, my work with regards to the Open Worm project, as, as such, is kind of I'm kind of waiting on uh, waiting on the SPH stuff at the moment. So I can't I, I don't have an answer to that question. I think once once um, once once we get once we uh, get the contraction stuff all, all working on SPH, then then we'll really be able to do some cool things. But until now. Um, I'm not doing that much, I'm afraid. Sorry, sorry to not, not no, to be more po sorry not to be more positive, but uh, I think I think I think the muscle cell the muscle cell stuff there's some refinements, but I think it's mostly uh, mostly yeah. done. Maybe one. Pardon? I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Could could you type in chat because you're breaking up? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm wondering, is the optimizer code going to have something um, that can generate like a, a phase-based uh, fitness function at some point? Do you think it does already? Awesome. 
um, did did you did you uh, in the example with a muscle model have you uh, tried it? In the example I emailed you guys, no. In uh, in my recent experiments, yes. Um, but I'm I'll send you guys an update on my on my recent experiments. I don't want to be sending sending results every every day because otherwise people will yeah. stop reading them. But uh, yes, yes, and it worked. It's it's very successful. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm super curious about that. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess I guess really for the for the next two months at least I'm really going to be focused on the task of getting this tool out there. Yeah. Um, and once once um, once uh, Andre and Sergey make some good progress on the contraction stuff, then then we'll be able, then I guess if one one way one way you might and everyone else might be able to help is if we can get some data on the mechanics and the relationship between the current injection and the mechanic and the mechanical behavior of the cell in response to current injection. I'll, I know we have some videos now, but if we can get some more sort of um, quantitative data, that would be amazing. So for a sort of force the current curve would be just just a sort of thing, but I, I don't know if that data exists or where you'd begin finding it. Yeah. Well, there's those videos that I that I linked to as a as a start, and uh, we can reach out to those labs as well, see if we can get more detail, as well as you know potentially if Matteo and his collaborators there. Uh, you know, uh, are interested in, in helping out with some data. There. That could be interesting. You have a seal against lab near you. I have a seal against lab near me. So we should, we may have to like pound the pavement to get some of these data ourselves. I, I think if we, uh, sorry, Stephen, you've died again, I'm afraid. Um, sorry, Stephen, you, it's like talking to Iron Man. Okay, can you hear me at least? What were you saying, Mike? Okay. If um, once we have the, the capacity to model the electrophysiology and couple that to sort of some some contraction, an arbitrary contraction function of the fluid, then that's uh, if if we could couple that with some experimental quantitative data on how the muscle does actually respond in the lab to to um, current injection how how it's how, how it responds in terms of its, its mechanics to current injection some experimental data on that then that's really a research paper waiting to happen so I think you might you, you, might, you might be able to convince people to give it to part some data if it exists but on the other hand, I think I think right now the most reasonable thing to do is to wait for Andre and Sergey to come back with their their next steps for the model. Sorry, Stephen, you're dead. Right. Okay. Sorry, that was a mute situation. Um, okay. So I want to keep us in time. So um, I'll break now. Um, and um, I guess we have to look to see if two weeks from now is like Christmas or something. Uh, um, yes, two weeks from now, if we were to do the Wednesday, is the 26th of December. I think most folks are going to be um, on holiday for that. What are you folks doing on the 26th of December? Uh, probably I won't. Personally, be able to join a meeting on the twenty sixth. That should be available on the twenty sixth. Me too. Okay, so uh, we'll probably it might be available, but it's uh, yeah. So we may just do things over email, or uh, yeah. maybe we'll take the opportunity to try IRC or something. But yeah, probably just stick over email then, and then have our first meeting, our first real meeting, back in January. Um, I'll see if I can't circle back with some of the folks who couldn't make this meeting in the interim. Um, it's so anyway, let's wrap it up. Uh, we're at the end of the end of the time. 
But uh, thanks, everybody, and um, have fun watching out. So we can move on to some next steps. Awesome. Okay. okay. Thanks, David. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice one. Bye. -bye. Bye. Night. Have a good, nice have a good holidays have to everyone. You too. Nice. You too. Thanks. All right. Let's uh, let's address some of the issues. So, uh, um, first thing I want to talk about uh, real quick is that uh, it's only been since last meeting, which is less than two weeks ago, that we launched the Open Worm Discuss list. And uh, I'm sort of surprised because it feels like we've had it forever now um, in that uh, <laughs> there's just been a lot of conversation on there. And I think it's been a very good thing to have that um, high volume list. Uh, and I'm trying, to, yeah, I'm trying to add a lot of stuff to it there. So um, that's exciting. Um, we also, in the last two weeks, had uh, a meeting um, with the, uh, the, the Balash paper where we settled on a couple things. Uh, one thing that we settled on was that we were going to shoot for a 3,000 word target. Uh, we were going to shoot for a perspectives uh, type publication rather than a full research article. Um, we also took the LaTeX content of the uh, manuscript that Balash had started. We put it up on the web uh, as a Google Doc. Uh, I think Mike Vela has had the most, uh, the most commentary on that. I think maybe the only one who's actually really significantly touched that document in terms of offering comments and edits, so thank you, Mike. Um, I'm going to get to that this week as well, um, but, uh, but we've already had some good collaboration on there. So I encourage the rest of you who haven't had a chance yet to uh, take a look at that. To um, uh, I've, I've hyperlinked it right here. Please bookmark that and just really, I mean, we all want to take ownership of that content, so any comments or questions. There's already been some interesting threads that have been started about it uh, that uh, would have come up as a result of it. So um, have a look. Um, then, uh, so we had office hours, office hours, office hours, uh, last week, which I'm going to continue to do to alternate with this meeting every two weeks. And it keeps getting more and more interesting uh, each time. So um, we actually had a, a, another C. elegans biologist uh, drop by who had published a paper that we had recently tweeted about, um, which was pretty cool. And uh, I'm... Actually, um, yeah, we're talking about potentially getting him into this meeting, but yeah, I'm too quickly. And anyway, I want to have a conversation with him uh, one on one first. So, um, but um, but that was pretty cool, and you can read the logs there. Um, it's like that was it was strange too because I think nobody was really asking a lot of questions for the first like 40 minutes, and then in the last 20 minutes, everybody popped in from other channels and just started asking all these questions. So that was cool. Um, so that I think was successful, and every time I do it, I learn more about what folks outside are curious about. And I think that um, you know, the more that we do that, the better in touch we are with folks coming into the project. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, um, I'm also uh, let's see, I'm, I'm also getting you chatted here in the background. So okay, um, so I want to talk about the GitHub Central project. Uh, that uh, I created here as a way to consolidate uh, some of the different uh, tools that we're using as an experiment anyway. Um, and uh, so if you click over there, um, so I was looking for a way to do this, and as we've, as we've seen before, there's no way at the level of an organization, an, an, a GitHub organization, to have a wiki or to have like a project page so the workaround for that is typically to make a like to, to have an organization and make a specific repository amongst all the rest of your code repositories that is the hub for everything else. So uh, so I named it OpenWorm. Uh, so it's under the organization OpenWorm. So it's OpenWorm slash OpenWorm. And um, I I um, have ported I I I I used a converter to take the wiki that we had on OpenWorm the same way that Mike had converted it into uh, PM wiki, I tried to convert it into GitHub wiki, and the conversion wasn't super great, so um, if you click over there and click on to the wiki, uh, and you start looking through, oh, let's see, uh, actually the, the homepage doesn't even have it, you have to click into this, this link 
here, which I'll, I'll also put into the minutes, um, to see the list of the wiki pages. And they look they start they look okay, but then as you scroll, you realize that there's like links that are missing, and and uh, and there's some things that you know maybe even got garbled because the script wasn't so great. So I, I'm I'm not satisfied yet to switch to switch this over uh, from from Google Code, but I want to soon. Um, so I basically need to go through there and clean it up. And also, really, I think it's a good time for us to just revisit all that content and see, like, well, what is you know what's still relevant? Um, you know, what do we want to refine um, and that kind of thing? I, I think we need to have a wiki, but right now it's it's messy not only because the conversion was bad, but because it's been a while since we really went back to think about it. So. Um, so I'm going to continue that process here in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks. The other thing under that, which is the last update for me, is that, uh, and I was just getting to this. So we, um, I, 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 I proposed the milestones for release four last time uh, as a mind map, and so I've gone through into GitHub milestones and I've created a bunch of milestones there um, under that basic idea. And uh, I departed from my, the usual style of making them into epic type stories, um, in this case, just so that they were larger containers, but um, may go back to that. But what I also did is that I put names, uh, I think, on every milestone, just for the person, like, taking the lead, which is not to say that that's the only person who will work on it, but just folks who, you know, are coordinating, uh, you know, those things. And uh, these are all, consider them just, you know, proposals. Um, this is not uh, definite, and this is not, this is not the only set, and then, um, you know, but so I, I have attempted to put a description to every single milestone. Um, and so um, I think everybody here except Alex ha is a lead on one of the milestones. Um, Alex, I wasn't sure which one you'd want to lead on, um, so, um, but you're free to do that. There is one that's on model optimization. Lately, Mike has just by effect has been taking the lead on, on several of these things. So I've, I've sort of just I've, I've sort of assigned leads based on sort of who is has tended to drive, but um, if you if you want to be leads for any of those, um, you know, just send it send the message to the discuss list. And it's, it's still is, sorry. Yeah. I I don't see any names associated with the milestones. Uh, maybe They're in the descriptions. You have to open the descriptions. Should be the last line in the description. Unless I left it out of one or two, but I'd say more than more the majority of them should have uh, here. Let me show you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I was. 